holy men shed their glorious blood for the Lord. They loved Christ in their life. They imitated him in their death and therefore were crowned in triumph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of St. Sixtus and his companions, very early Roman martyrs of the church, and who are mentioned in the first Roman canon. As we prepare now to enter into our worship today, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his pardon and peace so that we may worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray, Almighty God, make us docile in believing the faith and courageous in confessing it, just as you granted St. Sixtus and his companions that they might lay down their lives for the sake of your word and in witness to Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. And Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Nahum. See upon the mountains their advances, the bearer of good news, announcing peace. Celebrate your feast, O Judah. Fulfill your vows. For nevermore shall you be invaded by the scoundrel. He is completely destroyed. The Lord will restore the vine of Jacob, the pride of Israel. The ravagers have ravaged them and ruined the tendrils. Woe to the bloody city, all lies, full of plunder, whose looting never stops. The crack of the whip, the rumbling sounds of wheels, horses a gallop, chariots bounding, cavalry charging, the flame of the sword, the flash of the spear, the many slain, the heaping corpses, the endless bodies to stumble upon. I will cast filth upon you, disgrace you, and put you to shame. So everyone who sees you runs from you, saying, Nineveh is destroyed. Who can pity her? Where can one find any to console her? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is I who dealt death and give life. It is I who dealt death and give life. Close at hand is the day of their disaster, and their doom is rushing upon them. Surely the Lord shall do justice for his people. On his servants he shall have pity. It is I who do death and give life. Learn then that I, I alone, am God, and there is no God besides me. It is I who bring both death and life. I who inflict wounds and kill them. It is I who do death and do life. I will sharpen my flashing sword, and my hand shall lay hold of my quiver. With vengeance I will repay my foes, and requite those who hate me. 
just like it's believed today. I always say bring in the auditors. Uh, but uh, there's this belief that there was all of this gold and all of this money really stored in the catacombs. And that, of course, you know, if they got the Pope and they got the church, they'd be able to get all of this money. So, of course, St. Sixtus and his companions were arrested, and with them was a, uh, a fifth deacon, Lawrence. Uh, and, of course, St. Lawrence was with them, but was not arrested at the time. And St. Lawrence was charged with um, holding the purse of the church and taking care of the poor and the widows with the contributions. And so he was charged by the emperor's guards that he had three days to go and to gather all of the wealth of the church and to bring it to the emperor. And we'll know on Monday we'll tell the whole story you've heard, I'm sure, many times before what St. Lawrence did. But Pope Sixtus and his uh, four deacons were martyred uh, this day in 258. So when we think so many times about the antiquity and apostolic origins of our faith in the Latin Rite in the church, um, St. Sixtus and his companions are a wonderful example of the antiquity of the church. And also when we think about the structures and, and the foundations of the Eucharistic liturgy, when we think about how ancient they are, uh, here he is in 258 celebrating Mass in the catacombs where he is arrested and then eventually taken and martyred with the deacons. It not only celebrates, as our opening prayer reminded us, that willingness to imitate Christ in life and to love him and by death winning the crown of glory. And it reminds all of us, as the gospel relates to us today, that there is a cost to discipleship. Uh, and I sometimes say, although maybe it wouldn't be easy, sometimes, you know, being thrown into the cage with the lions or just having your head locked off sometimes is a little more quicker. Today, you know, persecution is done a lot more insidiously by the passing of laws, filing of lawsuits, uh, the breaking down of people's reputations, the slandering of things, and just the constant secular innuendo to try to beat down the church, to beat down what we believe, counter everything that the church tries to do. And now the greatest thing, especially in this country, is to take away the institutional structures that help us to do the work of the church in the civil arena, whether that's through our adoption services, whether it's through our pro-life activities. And as I say so often, the next step is going to be our Catholic schools. Watch it. They've already wiped out most of our healthcare institutions. And so it's like sort of cutting off the fingers till eventually there's no hand left to be able to distribute. And so we have to constantly look in every time and every age to say, how do we rise above this so that we do not become demoralized, but more importantly, how we continue the important work of the church. And I think today this feast of St. Sixtus and his companions, the deacons, remind us that even though they're absolutely convinced that they kill the Pope and kill his major deacons who are in charge of the distribution of the food to the poor, to help the widows, to bury the dead, that that will just completely wipe out the institution and that'll be it and we'll have everything. Well, history has shown us what happens. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And what ends up happening is in less than 100 years, what happens to, for all intents and purposes, the Roman Empire collapses and what fills its void? church. And so it reminds us that sacrifice and the shedding of blood leads to new life. And it's the paradigm of the Paschal mystery. Christ's death gives new life. And so for us as disciples, maybe not the physical shedding of our blood, although that may be asked of us someday, but many times the crosses that we bear are in a sense a figurative shedding of our blood. And we can't be afraid to shed that blood figuratively or literally for the good of Christ and for the work of the poor and the disenfranchised, the work of ministry. And so today's feast, like so many of them throughout the year, give us not only examples of great men and women through the ages who have modeled that for us, but then we're able to see from the historical backdrop, even long after their death, the success in the pragmatic era, not to mention the spiritual realm, of what their sacrifices have done. So let us not be afraid to be a sacrificial people. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together with confidence in the Father's love, let us now bring our needs to him. 
Let us pray for the church. May she grow in holiness and charity through the gracious mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Yes, Lord. For elected officials, may Christ's example of servant leadership be their guiding light. Let us pray to the Lord. Yes, Lord. For family members who are estranged from one another, may the Holy Spirit strengthen them as they seek reconciliation with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Yes, Lord. For those of us gathered here, may the grace of this sacrament transform us into the image of Christ's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all of our sick who we continue to commend to the Lord and for those who care for them, the Lord may continue to grace them and give them strength, health, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all of our personal intentions, particularly those listed in our parish book of prayer, and all of those we've promised to remember and that we hold in the silence of our hearts and bring today before the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. And let us pray. For George and Nancy Aldridge, for whom we offer Mass this morning, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed, that they who have died may find eternal rest and peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we offer this day, for we make them in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you are glorified in your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with the hosts of angels cry out, and without end, acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. These are they who came out of the great ordeal and have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. For God's sake, they handed their bodies over for punishment, and they have earned unfading crowns. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us conclude today with our prayers for peace, those in the military and for vocations. Our prayer for peace. Praise to you, a loving God, for you speak tender words of peace to all of your children. Guide our efforts to bring forth peace, the fruit of justice and love. Remove from us the greed and hate that threaten peace within our country and throughout the world. Inspire the leaders of governments to promote policies and actions that ensure peace and well-being for the human family. Strengthen those who work for peace in every place and keep safe under your watchful care all who serve and protect us. Bring lasting peace into our world by sending your eternal spirit into the hearts that you have made. Preserve all people from harm now and up to that day when the fullness of your peace will be revealed. Grant us this gift through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose kingdom of justice, love, and peace endures forever and ever. Amen. Our prayer for those in the military. Praise to you, ever watchful God, for you are our refuge and strength in every time and place. Send your blessing upon those who are serving our country in the armed forces. By your powerful spirit, shield them from all harm. Uphold them in good times and bad, especially when danger threatens. Let your peace be the sentry that stands guard over their lives, so that they may return home safely. Look with compassion on all victims of war. Ease their sufferings and heal their wounds. Put an end to wars over all the earth, and hasten the day when the human family will rejoice in lasting peace. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns as the Prince of Peace, both now and forever. Amen. And our prayer for religious vocations. Heavenly Father, your loving providence accompanies us on our life's journey. Thank you for the many gifts you have given us. We ask that you continue to call sons and daughters from our families and parishes to serve as priests, deacons, and consecrated men and women in the Diocese of Greensburg. Send your spirit upon us so that many will respond with great love to your call to service and leadership in your church. Give to those you have chosen the faith of the apostle, the vision of the prophet, and the courage of the martyr. Through the intercession of our diocesan patroness, our Lady of the Assumption, help us to be faithful disciples of your Son by following the example of Mary. Make us generous in sharing ourselves and our talents for the sake of your kingdom on earth. We ask this through Christ the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.